Okay, so today we're looking at expansion vessels. Um, in this instance, we're actually looking at the Worcester Bosch Green Star expansion vessel, uh, which has seemed to have been quite a few issues with recently. I don't know whether that's because people are using um, the wrong chemicals in systems or not flushing or whatever. I'll keep this fairly short. Um, right, first thing is, how do you know if your expansion vessel has blown? Um, there's a couple of ways. First one, uh, get your system up to 1.5 bar when it's cold put the central heating on. If the uh, pressure gauge then flies up and right over up to sort of three bar or, or you know goes up to even maybe two and a half bar um, from cold to hot, it's a fair chance your expansion vessel has burst. Now uh, the reason, uh, the way an expansion vessel works is it's a balloon. It's a balloon inside this red rubber case. There's different shapes and different sizes but this is a Worcester Bosch one, it hides behind the boiler. Um, basically what these are, there's a, um, there's a rubber balloon inside them um, and what it does is, if you imagine inside that container, there's a balloon and it's pumped up to, for example, let's say usual pressure on those would be about 1.2 bar so that it starts to squeeze down at 1.5 bar. The water comes in the bottom here and what it does is it squashes this balloon flat. So what it's doing is, as the water gets hot, it expands. And that expansion of the water is then taken up by the contraction of the balloon. The problems with them are, it leaks, the water gets in, then there's nowhere for it to, the, the water as it heats up to expand. So what it does is it increases the pressure in the system and it then, um, it, it then sends out the pressure relief valve. Anyway, okay, some other things. So, you're fairly sure your expansion vessel has gone. There's another way to check, and that is all expansion vessels have this little bicycle thing on the top. And what you can do is you can put a pressure gauge on it. Or what you can actually do is you can just, just do the hiss test. Just check and see that you've got some pressure there. Now bear in mind, it should be, uh, I don't know me metric scales, but it's um, 16, uh, 16 bar, uh, PSI to a bar, 1.2 bar, so say 18 PSI, something like that. There should be a fair amount of pressure in that. Do this when the system's empty though, because otherwise what you're doing is you're not measuring the pressure in here, you're measuring the pressure in the system. So what you need to do is to empty your system of, of pressure, so the pressure gauge on the boiler says nothing, then check it here. Right, okay, let's look specifically at this boiler. The nice thing about this boiler is that this expansion vessel sits up like that. I can't really back off enough. It sits upwards like that. So, and the water is fed in from the bottom. So the nice thing here is even if this has burst, what you can do is you can actually fill it back up from here with a bicycle pump, empty the system, fill it back up here from a bicycle pump, and you can then actually run for a while with air in here, no rubber balloon, so basically that balloon's gone. So if we go back to um, this again, go back to this again, you imagine what you're doing is rather than having this balloon, you're just having that pen doesn't work. You're just having that um, whole section full of air like this. So the water comes flooding in and then pressurizes that air up there. So you're filling it from the top. And the reason, and then that, that water coming in traps the air up here. So that's quite a useful feature that Worcester have done there, which is quite nice of them. Um, so in a dis you know, if you need to keep going for now, um, what you can do is you can just fill those pressure vessels up uh, with, a, with a pump from the top. Anyway, let's look at the realities of this. Now, I've cut this one apart because basically I, I, the, there's a stack of these back at the office, um, and I don't know why. Um, Worcester is a very reliable um, boiler manufacturer. There should be no issues with these. So let's have a look. I've cut it apart, and here's what we've got. Right, now this, that's the dry side. Look, you can see there the, the pressure, um, the, uh, the, the, the little air nipples there. And then this, there's a diaphragm in between. So this one's actually a bit different to normal. What they've done in this case is they've, uh, if I can find a pen, what they've done in this case is they have taken that like that, they've put the air in this side like that, and then they've split it down the middle and the water in here. So what you've got is water up here and air in here. So what's happening? Let's have a little look. This is squeezed in the edges. Now I don't think it's leaking around here because if it was you'd see it come out. 
Now this one, you can see how look, there's little strengthening bars to make sure that it doesn't, um, it doesn't rip at the weakest points. And again, up here, there's more strengthening bars. By the way, one other thing to tell whether your pressure vessel is burst or not is if water has gone from the wet side to the dry side. And you check that by seeing if water comes out of here when you try and eject air. So if water comes out of there, if it, it spits moisture at you, you know it's gone. But I was having a look at this and I couldn't really see. What I've done is I've cut the outside off, uh, I've, I've separated the two. And this one is knackered, you can see the water in there. Um, I just poured most of it on my desk, but um, I can't actually see why or where it's gone at all. Um, I mean, I assume it must have done because there's water in there, so it definitely is knackered, but there's no evidence of it. I mean, this is a fairly new boiler. There's no evidence of it having perished. There's no evidence of pinholes or anything like that. You can tell obviously this brown is nasty. That means that there's been, um, the system has been refilled with water regularly. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's causing corrosion. But I can see, and there's a good amount of mud at the bottom here, but I really can't see any reason why this has gone. But it certainly has. Um, there you can see the water coming back there. I mean, this was half full when I, um, when I took it out. Um, there's no evidence around, you know, for, for water to actually get out around the lip. Um, it wouldn't. It wouldn't come back into the second side. Really, it would. It would try and escape. You can see it came around here and sorry, it came around here and came over the rubber. It would try and escape out. So I can see no reason why it's done this. Um, you know, there's obviously possibly there's something wrong. You see the rubber's degrading a bit there and gone black. Um, I can't see. Yeah, I can't see any reason for this. Um, maybe the rubber itself has become porous. Um, it's a good thick piece of rubber, I and mean, it's one of the thickest I've seen, so I can't see any reason why. Um, all in all, it seems a very well built, -built piece of uh, kit. Um, I should probably wash this and see if I can find a pinhole, and uh, most likely that's what it is. But there we are. So in the short term, um, there's not even any sharp bits that it would catch on. So anyway, in the short term, if you've got a problem, you'll know because you'll have the pressure gauge on the boiler will fluctuate massively between cold on the central heating and hot on the central heating. Um, you can check it by getting your little, um, getting your little thing here and just checking for pressure. If there's water comes out, you know you've got a problem. And the other thing is, is that you can. Um, you can actually refill that, especially with this one, and I actually think that might be one of the reasons there's a problem here. Sorry. Is, um, if you imagine, the back of the Worcester boilers like that, with longer arms, don't I? The water comes in the bottom. I'm wondering whether the, um, this expansion vessel is getting extremely hot water up into it, whether there's convection currents taking very hot water up into it, which could affect the rubber. I don't know. I would have thought that Worcester wouldn't have made that kind of mistake um, on it but there we are okay in terms of replacing these just quickly uh, being as it's a Worcester it's all built to work on so you got your Worcester boiler now assuming your flue um, your flue usually crosses the back sorry um, your flue usually crosses the back now if I can find a pen again I will show you what you can do so your boiler sits like so and your expansion vessel lives in the back right there. And there's a little tag, oops, sorry, uh, let's just do that again. There's a little tag, um, so it sits in the back of the boiler there. There's actually, the boiler's got like a, a jig it sits on there. It lives in there like that. And there's a little tag there with a screw in it, uh, which is that one. So it's one little screw you can access from the top. And then your flue from your boiler, it might go straight up like that, at which point it's real easy, or it more than likely comes off the back and goes this way like that. Now, if you're not, obviously if you're not a gas engineer, you can't be taking the flue off. Um, but a gas engineer can take the flue off and can just slip this up, if there's room, there isn't always room, slip this up and take it out that way. Um, the, the the other end it just there's a, a little um a little tube that runs down uh, and that just pushes there's a little um pull pin to take the little um flexible tube out and off so they're very easy to get over 
get out. Um, you know, if you're lucky, if it's easy to access, I mean, for example, if you've got a, uh, a vertical flue that goes up, you'll find this could take 20 minutes to change. Um, if you haven't, if it's, you know, if it's bad, you could find that this take a couple of hours, especially if the flue is cemented in hard and you can't get it out, because then the engineer can't even lift the, uh, the elbow away from the boiler to get it out. So that, it can be more difficult. There we are. Well, I hope that helps. Um, I'll keep you updated if I find out any more as to why this happened. Um, I mean, there's evidence of scale in this side. That's that's some um, evidence of it getting very hot in here. I must admit, because the scale is sticking. Um, but you can actually see here. You can see, almost see the evidence of where the air was trapped in the wet side, acting as a uh, a pressure vessel. So you can see here how it was. Um, there was it was dry at the top here, or fairly dry at the top here. So there we are. Right there we are, guys. Hope that helps.